What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another Brand Doctor podcast episode. We have a repeat guest on the show today because him and I have known each other now. It's got to be close to six years. He's been doing such a tremendous job for my company and my clients. It's just been a, a delight to work with him. And he's taught me so much about copywriting and dialing in your message and really creating that connection between your 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 business and your audience. So I want to welcome back to the show Lee Rowley from cagefreemarketingcopy.com. What's shaking, Lee? Hey, Henry. Hey, it's good to talk to you, man. How you doing? I'm doing pretty awesome, man. So we recently been talking offline about this particular method that has really been a game changer for not only my business, but for a lot of my clients' businesses and your business. We talk about the luxury car method, which is consistency, accessibility, and relevancy. So I wanna take the time today to really dive into each of those pillars and really dig out the, the key values that each one of those pillars give off when we're creating our message for our audience. That uh, sounds great. Okay, so before we get started, for those folks that might have missed the first episode that you were on, let's do a quick little intro and let them know who you are, where you're from, and how you got started in the game. Excellent. Well, my name's Lee Rowley. Uh, I've been in the uh, copywriting niche and industry for over 10 years now. Uh, formerly owned a company called The Sales Copy Lab, which is an agency where I had junior copywriters that I worked with. Uh, that was a fantastic experience. I met a lot of wonderful people, and in, including you, Henry. And, uh, you know, but I, I found that I was itching to write copy myself. Uh, so I started taking on projects, and then I'm, I'm doing too many things. Uh, so I... I eventually I had to make the decision to say you know, I don't want to focus on really good copy I want to focus on creating amazing copy so uh, I, I burned down the sales copy lab and uh, started cage-free marketing copy I'm doing all the copywriting for that so uh, it's been a it's been a great transition and one that's been really super helpful and our uh, our clients have have enjoyed the the progression as well that's awesome dude so you're no spring chicken when it comes to writing copy. No. <laughs> and you've worked There's... with some big names. A few. Can you mention them? <laughs> I can probably mention a few. Uh, there, Russell Brunson might come to mind. I don't know. Yeah. A couple of us <laughs> internet marketers might know who that guy is. Right, right, he right. He was the one that actually recommended me to you. Yeah. When I was in his inner circle, I was saying, listen, I'm trying to build out my team. I'm trying to get things uh, situated so that I'm not trying to do everything here because I remember the first time I sat down and tried to write a sales page. <laughs> it was a joke. And I so I reached out to him on Voxer and I was like, Russ, how do I start this part of the business? And he said, dude, I got a guy. Just reach out to him. Tell him that I, met, I sent you. And, and dude, the rest was history. And dude, that was like six years ago. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, he's been just, just super cool. Uh, so, you know, Char Dr. Charles Livingston's real big in the health niche. Um, so he, he's one of my clients as well. Uh, Lisa Turner from Psychademy. She's uh, bigger in Australia. I did, uh, work with several Australian clients. So she's she's in the personal development space in, in Australia. And quite a few others I could go on and on. Uh, I'd say uh, probably uh, doing a, a page for uh, patty stanger who was the host of a, 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 a show called the millionaire matchmaker uh was probably one of the more interesting experiences that i've had <laughs> she's a jersey native i believe so yeah <laughs> <laughs> i can only imagine what that experience was like <laughs> good times good times <laughs> I bet, man. She tells it how it is. That's what I love about her. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about her. <laughs> so let's get into this, Lee. So let's look at, well, right before we went online, you talked about how 
luxury for one person may not be luxury for someone else. And I wanted you to dive into that, you know, here on the on the on the show and explain the difference. Right, exactly. Well, whatever niche you're in, if you're a coach, a consultant, you're selling physical products, whatever, then you want your brand to be a luxury brand because otherwise you're a commodity. Uh, but what I've learned over the years is that what's luxury to you is not necessarily luxury to me. So let's just let's just say, you know, Henry, what's your luxury car? If you could drive any car on the face of the planet, what would it be? Well, listen, I, I, I drive a luxury car now and I happen to, it's my third and I just love the vehicle. And so I drive a Range Rover and okay. just, I love it. And I, I, like I said, it's my third one. And there's just so many things about it that I okay. do like, you know, and I know it's a car, it has four wheels and it has a steering wheel and mm -hmm. it has an engine like everybody else. Right. This car does something for me that it doesn't do for my wife because my wife makes fun of me all the time for it. Right? <laughs> she's like, yeah, she's okay. like, it looks like this car should be on Star Wars and it looks <laughs> like the stormtroopers drive it. And, nice. and, I, and I laugh. But it, she has no care in the world. If it was up to her, she would drive a little Fiat convertible and call it a day. And by the way, Fiats are a great car. But she doesn't care for the, the, the high-end luxury model cars. But so to answer your question, it's a Range Rover. Okay, well, that's cool. Yeah, there's obviously something about that that makes that luxury for you, that makes it something where you, you can't get just anywhere else and something that makes you go back to that brand over and over again. Uh, personally, my luxury car, Mercedes Maybach S650. Nice. Okay, we're going there. Yep. All right. So if I if I could <laughs> if I could afford it, right, I'd probably have to go with the Rolls Royce Ghost convertible. Okay. Okay. I should have explained that because, like, okay, I'm not a luxury car. I drive I drive a freaking Malibu. Okay, so I'm not. You know, I didn't mean what you know what you would be willing to pay, but just like if you could have any car on the planet. So it would know, be okay. that one. That's that's a sweet choice. So, but it's different to everybody else. To somebody else, it's, you know, maybe a Lamborghini that you, you can accelerate so fast that it'll collapse your lungs, you know? I, but it's different to different people. So the, the point of that for me is that if your business, if you're going to be a luxury brand, you need to find out what luxury means to your particular audience. Agreed. Agreed. So, so what do we do here? So how do we, how do we determine that? How do we focus in on that and own that? Well, if you've got a, if you have an email list, if you already have an audience, you know, asking is definitely one of the best ways to go. And you know, if you can't do that, I mean, I'm a I'm a big fan of just people watching. If I can go someplace where I know people in in my client's target market are going to be, and I can be unobtrusive and and sip a cup of coffee and just listen, you hear a lot about how people really talk and and what it is that is really important to them. Got it. So. Let's get into the C of the car acronym here. Uh -huh. You know, the consistency. Why does our message need to be so damn consistent? Well, you and I talk about consistency all the time. You from a from, you know, especially from a design standpoint, you think about it if you go to a landing page and it has a, a minimalist look to it. You, you go to a sales page and it's all jumbled with with uh, you know, with images and you know i won't say gifts i hope nobody's using those things anymore uh, somebody probably has their, their website still belongs in in 1998 or whatever uh, you know but and, and even you know having your logo having the same fonts having the same you know uh, headers having the, you know, the same thing to i to tell that all together so that when people see your brand they immediately know it's you right the same thing's true from a copywriting standpoint that voice, that style, what it is that you are trying to convey to your audience and to your customers should be consistent across all platforms from your website to your social media, to your emails, to your videos, whatever. It needs to have that same style, that same sound so that they can lock in to your particular personality. Uh, I see a lot of times, I see 
especially newer business owners will use different copywriters on different pieces and generally because they're trying to save money you know so okay well i had this guy write the landing page uh, this guy over here was a little cheaper so i had him do the sales page and then this other this lady over here is doing the emails it just doesn't gel together it is basically just looks makes you look like you don't have your poo together that's it and you know it's funny i I, for those folks that follow me for a while now and really know what my brand's about, you know, there's a boldness to it. There is a no BS approach. It's a very direct approach. And it was so funny. I have to share this. So today I, I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see somebody say, I'm not asking for your feedback. I'm demanding it. I want to get feedback on this particular landing page that I've created and I forget else what he wrote. Now I'm scrolling a hundred miles an hour on my Facebook, right? So I see it and it looks like at best 1998 style <laughs> and feel and, and, and impact. So he demanded a request. I gave it to him. I said, <laughs> Looks cheap and amateur, dot, dot, dot. Click, and I went on with my day. And so he wrote back and he said, ooh, that kind of hurt. He was like, man, what's a doctor to, to leave a comment like that and not, per, and, and not leave a remedy? <laughs> and I said, what kind of a person would go to the doctor and not pay him for a prescription? <laughs> and then I get a private message saying, you know, I value your feedback and value your, uh, you know, you as a professional, but man, did you come across as a dick today? And I was like, listen, noted. I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. You asked for feedback. I gave it to you. It's honest. It's truthful. It's my opinion. Take it or leave it. You asked, I told. That's right. Period. <laughs> they wrote back, oh, I'm, uh, I guess I was wrong about you, this and that. I said, let's cut the bullshit, dude. You know who I am. You know how I am and what I do. I'd be doing you a disservice if I sugarcoated my response. <laughs> and I left it at that. Unref like, you, you unfriended me. and oh, Who gives a fuck, right? I don't care. And, but the point that I'm trying to make with this story is, my brand is very direct and upfront and straight and to the point. Yeah, it's sometimes going to come across brash, right. right? But if I came across like a pussy and sugarcoated everything, would that be consistent to my brand? Not at would, all. Would people question my integrity? 100%. So that's the point that I'm trying to make here. So that's why it's so important to be consistent with your voice. And so that your voice matches with your identity. So people don't get confused because confused people don't buy. Right. So let's move on. What about A, accessibility? I, I, this one is really, really good. And I think people are gonna get some really good value out of this particular pillar. Absolutely. Well, all the, the messaging, the copy that you're putting out there uh, needs to be accessible to your target audience. Now, I see this a lot with coaches I work with. Like, coaches make up about 60% of my clientele. So I, I see this all the time that they know so much about their industries and they know so much about their niches and their particular subsets that they forget that their target customers are nowhere near that. So they're talking over their heads. And that's a problem. Right. That's, that's a huge problem. I have a client like that right now who uses these big words and the, and the, the, the lingo, any unsophisticated prospect is going to be tuned out completely because you're over their head. Let's face it. That's exactly. I always say you need to be one notch above. That's a good point. So how does one determine what one notch, two notch, three notch is? It's the same thing for me again it's it's people watching there's different ways of going about that but actually being able to listen to people uh, who are talking without you know feeling like they're being interviewed or anything like that. i mean it's really just everyday life of just you see how they talk pretty quickly like i guess right. you know, if, I, if i can if i can find my if i have the ability to find a pocket of my clients tell my clients audience 
rather than you know, I could go and sit and listen to them and you know within earshot and you know make some notes, then that may, that goes a long way toward being able to create that accessible voice. Hmm. And if you can't do that, I always say on physical products as well, go to Amazon, read the reviews. You're going to That's see a, how people I, really talk. I love that piece of advice. That is a piece of advice that people sleep on constantly. If you just read the freaking reviews on Amazon to those popular books, mm -hmm. you will have months, if not years worth of topic of conversation to video about, write about, blog about, like whatever. That is such a... If anybody takes anything away from today's episode, it's that little nugget right there, that lead drop. Go to Amazon, look at those popular books, and check out the reviews. You're going to get a tone from the readers in the first couple reviews, and you'll know exactly what to do with that. You could speak to those pain points. You could speak to those, those points that they make that make them feel happy or proud or empowered. I mean, there's so much juice there. Now, what about the the mirror, the mirroring effect, like, or the, the mirroring strategy? So are you familiar? Absolutely. Yeah. So for those folks that aren't familiar with the mirroring effect is when, you know, when you're talking to somebody, when you start to use their lingo with them after they start dialoguing with you, right? they're going to feel a hell of a lot more comfortable with you. Now, I'm not saying mirror them like if they sneeze, you sneeze, or if they cough, you cough, or they move their hands a certain way, you move your hands a certain way. I mean, that's a little bit of it, but that's gonna, you're going to look like a clown if you do it that way. Well, I'm just saying from a verbal standpoint, when these folks are chatting with you and they start to use some lingo, don't be afraid to use that lingo back at them, especially if they... Um, if they, if they understand it, I'll give you a quick example. So I was talking to a coach in the equestrian industry, right? So te she teaches riders how to be a better rider, right? And the one thing about her was she was petrified of video. She goes, I don't do video. I don't know if that's a game changer or not, but it'll be a shot in hell before you get me on video, <laughs> right? And so we continued to chat and we had to get to her fears and challenges, right? And I had said to her, if you continue to leave this fear of video in your stable, you will never get to the next level. The only way to handle fear is to go at it head first, let it out of the stable, and deal with it because eventually you're going to have to. So she was pissing her pants because she was like, oh, I like that. I use the word stable. I know what a stable is. Yep. Right? Sounds so silly, but I'm going to give you, that's a silly example, but I'm, I'm connecting with her. I'm resonating with her. We're building a relationship. She's starting to trust me now because I'm, I'm, I'm coming down and I'm, I'm talking at her level. I'm not trying to sound like I'm better than her. Or I'm not trying to be condescending. I'm just trying to talk to her in a way that's going to help her ad adapt is not the word, but just connect. Exactly. And you had actually several phrases in there. I mean, it was, it was just the stable is as you're talking, I'm picking up there, you stable handle. Know, go forward you know i mean it just you've got several things that just, you know the way a person's mind works if they're uh, a professional equestrian you know yeah. they're gonna they're gonna th to pick up and they're gonna connect to words like that as you say that, that that makes a connection with you and you know what i love about you lee and your work is when we provide you with the briefs right you have such a great sixth sense of taking that brief and really diving into that particular customer profile. And we always talk about this and we laugh, but you have this like tongue in cheek way of writing copy, which I mean, if you ever read the copy on my website, you know, there's a few paragraphs there that'll get you chuckling because Lee knew how to pull that emotion of laughter, right? Of, of humor out of the brief. And that is, that's a, that is a, a gift, my friend, you know? And I feel like you, you've been so dialed, like you just know how to evoke emotion with words, 
Like I know how to evoke emotion with imagery. And exactly. That's, and that's where I think you and I are just that one two punch because you know, with, with, with my design work backed by your verbiage, my designers go insane and I go nuts because you give us so much fire to play with. Our <laughs> creative minds go and go 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 wild. <laughs> you know, and it shows. Absolutely. That's that's the joy for me and that's also why I just couldn't stay out of uh, of doing copywriting myself. You know, it's 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 just to be able to to create that emotion out of just literally nothing staring at a blank screen and, and saying, you know, look, I've got, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but I've got a little bit of faith that, uh, that, uh, what's going to end up on this screen is, uh, is a fantastic thing. And, you yeah. know, so, something I talk about a lot in, in uh, on my website with uh, my people is the beginner's mind in copywriting. Mm -hmm. Every piece of copy that you write is the first piece of copy you've ever written. <laughs> mm. so you know, much. the fundamentals, you know, the skeletons, but it's so every true. It's so true. And you're, and you're the, your, your, your last piece of writing determines, you know, what did I say? You're only as good as your last piece of work. <laughs> I guess. It's, it's the same kind of thing. I mean, I'm in the creative space. I get it. For sure. You know, yeah. so I'm not constantly bringing heat. You know, people are going to be like, ah, oh, you know, he used to have it or, or, you know, that last piece was great, but this one fell a little flat. Like, you know, so like, it's, it's a great reminder that you always want to, come with the heat you always want to come with 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 passion and desire to to transform and to really get those emotions going because that's what that's what moves the needle that's what makes people grow getting them out of their comfort zone and i'll talk about that towards the towards the latter end of the the the, the podcast but so we have consistency we have accessibility or connect or or, or being able to uh, you know adapt or relate you know, on the, on a level with with your audience, so you're not speaking over their head. And then the last one are you talk about relevancy, and here's one that I think is the game changer, and the one that typically makes and breaks all marketing messaging, brand messaging, brand voice, brand copy um, for entrepreneurs and, and and small business owners. Exactly, relevance is one of those things that also with a copywriter just keeps me up at two in the morning just making me go why 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 what no uh, especially in the coaching sphere you know if, when you're when you're developing those relationships it's hard to know what's relevant i mean what you know uh i have this intense uh, immense body of knowledge and all of these facts about my personality and my past and how i've gotten to be where i am and so forth and it, it's just it's easy to just vomit that on your audience and just expect them to care about all of it. But all of the information that you put out there, not saying you shouldn't talk about your life. I mean, your story is important, but your story is only important in so far as it moves them toward where they need to be, which is buying your product or service. Uh, I would like, tell a story. I had a client who was a health coach. Uh, we did a, a great thing for her. We did a whole funnel of copy and I sent it to her and she came back and she was just flat furious. And, and it was like, okay, well, it happens. What's the problem? And she said, you did not tell them my favorite color was blue. I specifically told you that my favorite color is blue. And I said, well, guess what? Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> you do. I understand that. I'm happy for you. I'm glad your favorite color is blue. But that is not going to move the needle one millimeter toward getting people into your program. That so that's the kind of thing I'm talking about when I'm talking about relevance. It's, you know, there, there are places for different aspects of your story. And, but there are things that are better left for your memoir. I, you know, I always say that if you're, if you're focusing on your story, that you're not building a business, you're writing a really expensive memoir. Yeah, that is, oh my God, I love that. I love, that's, that's one that I'm going to keep in my back pocket because it's so, it's such a reminder. You know, I, I had a client recently that was, that was worried about the color shirt that he had on in one of his posts and in one of the images that we created for him. And I had to remind him that it wasn't about the green shirt. Nobody gave a shit about his green shirt. Uh, what they really cared about was how the hell is he going to help them live a healthier life, get in better shape because he's in the fitness space, right? Right. So they're not worried about the green shirt, bro. They're worried about... <laughs> what you're going to do to provide value to them. 
right? Because as we're scrolling through our feeds, you know, we're only going to stop at something that grabs us by the neck. Right. And if you're not, if you're not creating that kind of value up front, you're get, you're going to, you're going to get lost. And that's one of the things that I'm stressing, just like you're stressing is you got to talk with them, not at them. Right. And exactly. I think, I think you do a fantastic job with, with being able to create that relevancy through metaphor. I've seen you do that with, with some of my client copy, some of my copy, you create a, a, a extremely vivid metaphor. What are some other ways that you can create relevancy between your, your, your brand and your audience? Read your audience's stories. Yeah, I know. It's, it, I knew it was going to happen sooner or later, <laughs> but it's, you know, it, it just that the office manager just has to pop in and say hello. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, your, your customers will tell you their stories. I mean, you know, and, and it's, you know, by finding out what's important to them, that's what you, that's how you find out what parts of your story are relevant. So that's a great point. And so I'm going to dig a little deeper here. Don't forgive me for putting you on the spot. But you've been in this game a decade. So no, it's not anything that I'm probably going to trip you up with. But so how does one find out more about what's important to them? So how does one dig? How does an entrepreneur or small business owner dig for that importance in their audience? Oh, there are a lot of ways to do that. I can't even do it's You could go direct and use use quizzes, surveys, uh, even little things on Facebook uh, that are, are carefully phrased questions to elicit the kind of information that you want without letting them know that you're really digging so that you can create a new course or uh, add to your add to your coaching, whatever. Right. So that's a fantastic thing. I also am a, still a big fan of just, you know, if, if, I'm in the store in the wife shopping for uh, a dozen things to stand in front of the magazine rack. And I, first of all, I'm, I'm surprised this thing still exists, uh, you know, in the digital age, but like, man, you sit and read headlines for 20 minutes and you just find out all kinds of stuff about what people are, have problems with. I mean, those headlines will tell you if you deconstruct them yep. to find out, you know, to find out what it is that they're getting at with those four words, five words, six words. I mean, you know, th these are people who are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and sometimes a hundred thousands of dollars a project yeah. just to come up with these six words. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. I've got a buddy who's been in the, in the radio and, and TV space for a long time, about 40 years, I'd say. And he says, uh, you know, I was made by living three words at a time. <laughs> so, but uh, what you can take away from that can create, uh, you know, a business that's you know, 2X, 4X, 10X, in a matter in no time just to being able to find out what's relevant to them and give it to them yeah and 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 that's the it sounds so easy right <laughs> yet we make it so complicated you know so uh, you know, once a week on my instagram i'll i'll put a post out there it's called the ama you know ask me anything and it's not something i created i seen it i seen it start to catch wind sort of beginning of this year and it was i thought it was one of those you know engagement employees, you know, one of those engagement hacks. But one of the things that I realized right away when I started to do it was I really found what was important to my audience. And a lot of it all comes back to how do I get more followers? How do I get more audience? But what they're really saying is, how do I get more attention? Okay. And, and, and the V man, you know, Mr. GV himself, Gary V <laughs> talks about, attention all the time and without it you don't have a business you know without it you don't have a brand and so what i try to do is when i'm crafting content because this is such a popular question that's asked on a weekly basis by hundreds of people i try to create content around how are they going to get attention how can i help them get more attention how can we position them as subject matter experts? How can we get them to be paid their worth, right? How do, how do I, how do you stand out from all the noise that's out there? So I'm crafting content around that and I'm really shining light and, and providing real value 
and solutions to those issues, those problems. Because when you get in front of the right people, sales, when you start to stand out from your audience, sales, better leads, you know, when you start to do these things, people just don't know what they don't know. And we, somebody's got to step up to the plate and help them. Exactly. And I'm not talking this fluffy bullshit that's, that's ma mainly out there. It's all sort of hollow and, 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 and absent, I, as I like to call it. You know, they talk a big game, but they're not helping you execute it. I, ha I, heard, I heard that somebody had went to this millionaire mentor for a question and they said, Google it. That's, wow. a, that's a coach? Like, that's a coach? No, I get it. I get it. Right. But like, that's the value that you're bringing to your audience? It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it's wild. It's wild these people out there that are calling themselves experts. I never once called myself an expert. I let the, I let the audience call me what they want to call me. You can call me a douchebag if you want. I re it really doesn't matter. To, it doesn't matter to me. But like these people are, are, are calling themselves these experts and these, and I'm just saying to myself, well then show me, like really show me that you're a true expert. And, and I know we went off tangent here, but <laughs> it's, it's it, the point I'm trying to make is, the reason why it's it's so hard to sell these days is because you're not staying relevant with your audience. You're not being accessible. You're either talking over their heads or you're shouting at them or you're talking at them like like they're, they're transactions and not people. Exactly. And then the consistency is all over. There's, there is none. There's a lack thereof because from a voice message, uh, from a voice standpoint or from a copy standpoint, you're talking one way, but you're acting another, right? You look one way, yet talk and act another. Right. But like, why don't you, like, of course people aren't paying attention to you. Of course people can't connect and relate and, and get emotional with you. Look at what you're doing. It comes, out, it comes across as inauthentic. That's it, at the end of the day. So you have just this really, you have this very unique way of getting into the audience's mind. <laughs> and that, what, what, what's one of those old sayings? Like you want to get into the conversation that's already going on in their heads. Exactly. You got some talent of doing that, my friend. I just have to tell you. <laughs> well, hey, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for those, we got to wrap this up. I forgot. I have a... I have a, a web class I got to do in 15 minutes. I got to prep oh, for, but yeah. so for those folks that want to learn more about your services, where could they go? You can just go to www.cagefreemarketingcopy.com. And if that's too long to write down, you can just go to leerolly.com and it'll take you to the same place. Easy enough. Lee, thank you again, my friend for taking time out of your day dropping some 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 serious value and really shining some light to these key pieces of 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 importance when it comes to getting your brand's messaging right, finding your voice and really connecting with your audience. Awesome, my pleasure. It's always a blast to talk to you and uh, you know, be able to chat with a with a fellow marketing expert. So, and I I know you don't want to call yourself an expert, but I think you are, so just deal with it. Go. Cool. <laughs> I'll take a compliment. I'll take a compliment. All right, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, guys. I just want to wrap this episode up. Once again, thank all of you. I thank all of you for watching and listening. If you haven't subscribed to iTunes podcast yet, please head over there right now and subscribe to this channel. If you haven't written a quick little written review on iTunes, I encourage you to do that. It's sort of the fuel that keeps this podcast moving and keeps me juiced up to bring you as much value as I possibly can. And if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, drop some comments. I want to interact with you guys. I want this to be a dialogue, not a monologue. So drop some comments, give us some feedback and you know, we'll get back to you as, as, as soon as we can. So there you have it guys. Another episode in the books. I will catch you on the next episode. And last but not least guys get out there and start executing this stuff. Don't just listen to it. Nothing happens when you, 
listen to just listening to things. It happens when you actually do it. So have an awesome day, guys, and I'll catch you on the next episode. Later.